यम तो भक्त्या माम नित्यम सिंचति क्षीर धारया इधम विचार गोविंद तत्प्रहारम निगृह्य च स्वयं जग्राह तम घातम मौलौ स्वे च जगत्पति कुठारेणातिक्ष्णेन ताड़िते वेंकटेश्वरे दिस श्लोकम एक्सप्लेन्स दैट मोमेंट व्हेन श्री वेंकटेश्वर स्वामी अवतारम मैनिफेस्टेड इनटू द फिजिकल वर्ल्ड एंड आफ्टर दिस डिस्गस्टिंग नास्टी सैक्रिलेज एंड मोस्ट नेग्लिजेंट एंड इररिस्पोंसिबल इंसिडेंट ऑफ द घी एडल्ट्रेशन इन तिरुमल लड्डू which is offered as the prasadam for Sri Venkateswara Swami each and every person working in TTD should get this words deep into their head and heart let me explain what and why the very moment when sri venkateswara swami revealed himself to the physical world was during an incident when he protects a cow from a raging axe he takes the hit of the axe on his head emerging out from the earth and protects the cow the stala puranam and all it's a bit out of context in the current scenario but just to keep it very short the purpose of sri venkateswara swami avataram revealing himself to the physical world was to protect a cow from getting killed and today we are in such a disgusting situation where beef contaminated laddus are being offered to the same sri venkateswara swami now don't tell me all this politics whether it is really offered or not offered hell with it hell with it this video is about certain very very important questions that each and every hindu must ask tirumala tirupati devasthanam and the government of andhra pradesh i am one 100% factual in this video and not one bit of this video can be contested for its facts and truth let's get started first and foremost the tirupati laddu contamination issue is a national issue it affects each and every hindu and each and every person who has faith in sri venkateswara swami both the state and the central governments should treat this issue as a national issue when you are laying authority on thousands of crores of rupees that are coming out of tirupati when such a sacrilege act is conducted shouldn't that be treated with equal responsibility this is a national issue and should be treated like one period aham bhakta paradhino hya svatantra ibadvija says narayana in shrimad bhagavatam i am completely under the control of my devotees indeed i am not at all independent i am subservient to my devotees these are the words of narayana in shrimad bhagavatam it means sri venkateswara swami is a servant of his devotees i repeat my words sri venkateswara swami is a servant of his devotees and ttd by definition is a servant of sri venkateswara swami and also ttd is a servant of the devotees of sri venkateswara swami understand this position very clearly ttd is a servant of the bhakts of sri venkateswara swami so straight question to ttd is when venkateswara swami himself says that he is a servant of his devotees and ttd is a servant of sri venkateswara why is ttd not bound by right to information act each and every bhakt of sri venkateswara swami has the right to question ttd and ttd says that it is not bound to the right to information act why what explains this i'm not speaking legally i'm speaking ethically i thoroughly verified if ttd falls under right to information act and wherever i read online and also check on the concerned government portals it is quite clear that ttd does not fall under rti act Now if a bhakt of Sri Venkateswara Swami want to know how well is TTD taking care of Govinda and the properties of Govinda how can we check why aren't you bound by RTI act a straight question to TTD that each and every bhakt should ask and here comes the most mind blowing part of this entire laddu issue pause it and read for yourself On July 22, 2024, TTD put out this press release saying that it is giving stern warnings to the ghee suppliers and one of those suppliers resorted to adulteration of ghee. Now understand these words very clearly. Adulteration of ghee means something is mixed in ghee which should not be done. No one will mix water in ghee. It's not soluble. It's common sense. A fat is soluble only in a fat. Anyone who reads this press release and is fully aware of the current 
context of the laddu contamination with animal fats it is very clear that july 22nd 2024 when ttd put out this press release they are very well aware of the animal fat contamination in the ghee otherwise they will not put out such a straight strong press release saying that the ghee is adulterated adulteration of ghee by definition says that there are certain unwanted fats mixed in the ghee now the straight question to andhra pradesh government is the ongoing laddu ghee contamination erupted on september 18th 2024 while ttd has put out this press release on 22nd july 2024 so there is two months of delay in public attention okay let us discount entire september because of the floods but still there is one month one week close to five weeks august and the last week of july so five weeks of delay in public attention in such a huge issue which is absolutely sacrilege and there is absolute silence what explains this two months of delay in public attention now don't tell me that people were verifying to make sure that if the animal fats are really mixed in the ghee or not that is very stupid assumption because ttd themselves have put out in the press release that the ghee is adulterated i'm very sure that ttd is responsible enough in putting out such strong press release then what explains this two months of delay in public attention and question to ttd is ghee adulteration means presence of unwanted fats in the ghee everyone knows that if beef fish oil and pig fats are present in the ghee Why TTD press release on 22nd July 2024 did not state this publicly? Why is it sugar coated saying that there is just adulteration of ghee? Is it not your duty to inform the devotees that such and such animal fats are adulterated in ghee? And here is a red flag. We are going to stop all the darshans, all the prasadas, everything because there is a lot of contamination that has happened. That is the duty of TTD. So a question to TTD is why is that this press release not mentioning that animal animal fats are present in the ghee another very pertinent question is why is ttd outsourcing ghee in first place why is it not self sufficient is it lack of funds or lack of will why is ttd outsourcing ghee why is ttd purchasing ghee from private players why can't it have its own ghee production in house before we move any further on this question let me remind you once again that moment when sri venkateswara swami revealed himself was to protect a cow so by definition ttd has this huge responsibility on itself that it should also continue the intentions of sri venkateswara swami that is protecting cows go rakshaka hari govinda this is what you often get to hear in tirupati and that's for a very good reason to begin with in april 2022 TTD inaugurated a ghee production plant that houses desi cows. It is a very good step and we should appreciate TTD for this right decision in the right direction, but it is too little and too late. Let me explain. Following the inauguration of this ghee production plant based on desi cows, this is the statement from TTD. As you can read, there are 200 desi cows in this goshala and across the country there are trying to procure some 200 to 300 they see cows more to this goshala and then on a day it requires 60 kilograms of ghee out of which 30 kilograms are used for making naivedya anna prasadam and the remaining 30 kilos is for deeparadhana which means on a day to prepare all the naivedya anna prasadam to sri venkateswara swami in tirumala tirupati devasthanam they need 30 kilos of ghee per day this is not for the laddus that you and me will be given as prasadam in the laddu counter that is completely different these are naivedya anna prasadas that are offered to govinda on daily basis just within the temple premises this is very important to understand and then there is 30 kilograms that is used for deeparadhana and of course additionally they need some 4000 liters of milk for abhishekam and other daily rituals in the temple so the objective of this goshala and the ghee production plant is to cater to the 60 kilograms of ghee per day which is quite high honestly because desi cows their milk is very limited. limited unlike jersey and other kinds of breed which gives more and more milk in terms of liters so desi cows generally give very less milk but it is of high quality now getting to the actual point lakhs of laddus would be sold on every day in tirumala and this making of laddus need thousands of kilograms of ghee thousands of kilograms of ghee per day i'm talking about 
and to meet this demand ttd has been outsourcing ghee to the private players very much understandable but here is where we need to expand our vision for all practical reasons vedas are the base of sanatana dharma we all know that and yagna forms a central part of the vedic rituals we know that too now what is the central part of a yagna it is agni and what powers agni it is ghee so the chain goes like this sanatana dharma to vedas to yagna to agni to ghee so ghee forms a very very crucial role in sanatana dharma and ttd cannot run a single day without ghee so naturally when ghee is of such a huge importance there need to be a vision within ttd on how can you be self sufficient and produce the ghee in house and do not rely on external players and there are two drivers behind this ghee self sufficiency that ttd should have number 1 the absolute autonomy that it need to have with respect to ghee production but number 2 which is more important is again going back to the intention of sri venkateswara swami avataram that is to protection of cows on one side ttd needs enormous amounts of ghee on daily basis and on the other side it has to fulfill the intentions of govinda which is cow protection and when you put these two things together ttd can single handedly revive the desi cow population across bharat with its enormous demand of ghee let me bring in a different scenario to explain this better if india is purchasing defense technology from russia typically the defense deals will be of technology sharing that means initially we buy the equipment from russia for a certain number of years and eventually russia should share the technology with india in such a way that india becomes self sufficient or self reliant with respect to the defense technology that is importing from russia on long run this is how typically the defense deals are done technology sharing very important part in defense deals now let us apply same template in the current context ttd procuring ghee from private players that's good that's okay but then how should the deal be done in such a way that these private players help ttd establish the goshalas and they have the skill and the technology in making ghee so they should nurture these goshalas of ttd in small scale across india and 10 years down the line all these goshalas should be fully nurtured to run on itself so today ttd procuring ghee from private players is okay but 10 years down the line there need to be a deal in such a way that all these dairies nurture the ghee production plants across india where ttd has the autonomy on this ghee production plants and then what is the incentive for this private player supplying ghee throughout this 10 years ttd will have to pay a higher price per kilo of ghee that they are procuring from these private players so basically the investment of ttd in setting up these plants is kind of amortized over a period of 10 years this is just a very crude random example that i'm just putting forward in terms of how ttd should envision itself towards ghee autonomy it has ttd i mean has enormous potential to single handedly revive desi cow population across bharat this is an open request to ttd just float this idea of how can ttd be self sufficient in ghee production in the next 10 years just give this as a problem statement to the iams that you have i'm very sure in one week time you will have 25 most sustainable and profitable business case on your table and by doing this by getting ghee autonomy and by reviving desi cow population my dear ttd you are fulfilling the intentions of govinda that is cow protection symbolic cow protection with one or two goshalas with 150 200 cows that is not sufficient you have the power and potential to change the demographics of desi cow population across india dare to deny this and whatever i have been saying about ghee self sufficiency of ttd over the last couple of minutes i'm not saying like an armchair intellectual it is a real business case and in fact ttd is also working on the same lines on becoming self sufficient with sandalwood just pause it and read this press release sandalwood or gandham which is used in the daily rituals to govinda ttd is completely planning to be self sufficient in next couple of years and they planted sandalwood trees in the forest of tirupati over 100 hectares so i am just showing mirror to ttd if you could do this with sandalwood why can't you do with cow and ghee self sufficiency is it lack of funds or lack of will or lack of vision ttd should question itself
on the same lines one good thing again we need to appreciate ttd is for their line of products called namami govinda which are completely based on panchagavya or the by products of milk and the biological excrete of cow which is highly revered in sanatan dharma so going back where we started every hindu must question ttd while you are becoming self sufficient on sandalwood why can't you work towards self sufficiency of ghee not just for the 60 kg which is needed in the temple but the thousands of kg of ghee that you need on daily basis for making the laddu prasadam and by doing so it is not just about economics or self sufficiency more importantly it is about the intentions of govinda gorakshaka hari govinda i rest my case now let me switch to a different topic malicious attempts of spreading christianity in tirumala an official statement by ttd 29th october 2014 stern measures will be taken out to put an end to evangelism that is spread of christianity in tirumala which is the most sacred place for hindus and there there are attempts for converting people into christianity this was back in 2014 but this malicious attempts of spreading christianity to the pilgrims of tirupati is a very important issue even today let's discuss about that Let's talk about both good and bad with regards to this topic starting with the good first Shrivani Trust is established by TTD and it is intended to revive temples all over Andhra Pradesh establish new temples and propagate dharma and protect Hindus from the religious conversion gangs So on this note we really need to appreciate TTD for setting up temples in the name of Shrivani Trust Here is the ground reality. Few years ago back in 2019, pilgrims who are commuting to Tirumala by APSRTC that is the Andhra Pradesh Road Transport Corporation the government buses from downhill to uphill they were given these tickets where there is an advertisement printed on these bus tickets saying that we can take you to Jerusalem at a very economical price now let me get one thing straight the beating heart of marketing or placing an advertisement is position and target audience anyone who is working in marketing would definitely know this where you place an ad is everything about that ad because the whole idea of ad is visibility and the positioning of ad is very crucial now aps rtc can publish jerusalem ad for christians and saying that they'll take them for an economic price and all that's fine as long as they are printing these ads elsewhere but here is a bus that is exclusively taken by the pilgrims from downhill to uphill in tirupati only people visiting tirumala as a pilgrimage will be taking this bus and on these bus tickets you have this ad printed that we can take you to jerusalem at a better price what explains this nonsense a straight question to andhra pradesh government is why such negligence about hindu sensitivities what is the situation of proselytization attempts on tirumala where ttd itself acknowledged it in 2014 this question is very important and you will understand why in next couple of minutes Let's switch to a gazette issued by the Andhra Pradesh government. What you are seeing on the screen is the Andhra Pradesh government order or the GO number 1060 Revenue Endowments 1 dated 24th October 1989. This document is very important for TTD because this GO directs TTD how it need to function as an organization. And if we go to section 9 which says appointment and method of recruitment, it's basically about how TTD need to recruit people into its payroll as you can clearly see the section that i highlighted the point reads as following notwithstanding anything contained in these rules or any other rules in vogue appointment to any of the posts in any category in any of the institutions administered or substantially funded by the ttd shall be made only from people professing the hindu religion in simple words each and every employee of ttd shall be a hindu and only a hindu this is a government order so whenever your politicians say that i will make sure that only hindus work in ttd i don't know why hindus feel happy about it it is not a favor that he or she is doing whoever the politician has made that statement it is a law that they need to follow do you understand that so don't feel happy whenever a politician says that i will make sure that only hindus work in ttd they are not granting us something there is already a law in place and they just have to follow it period while the aforementioned law is very much in force 
workers. Unfortunately, we have these instances where non-Hindu employees are found in TTD. They identified around 44 non-Hindu employees working on TTD payrolls. So that means a gross violation of the law that only Hindus must be employed in TTD. Very recently, the Deputy Executive Officer Snehalata, who is working in the Welfare Department of TTD, was found out to be a Christian. Can you imagine? A Deputy Executive Officer of TTD is a crypto Christian. And then, like I said, there is a court case that is going on for 44 employees who are found out to be non-Hindus and working in TTD. As I said at the very beginning of this video, I want to make this video as factual as possible with undeniable proofs. So this is the reason I'm not bringing up the random incidents that popped up on YouTube where non-Hindus were spotted on Tirumala. So I'm restricting myself for these undeniable situations. For example, the 44 employees were officially on records on TTD and there's a court case going on. So straight question to both TTD and the Andhra government is, how can devotees verify if TTD is following the law and recruiting only Hindus into TTD? How can a Hindu devotee question TTD in this regard? Because you are the servant of Govinda and we want to make sure that if you are following the law correctly or not, and how can a normal devotee, a common man, question TTD if the rules are being well followed by TTD, yes or no? We need a official response about all the non-Hindus, if at all they are still employed in TTD. If not, then what are the measures that are being taken by TTD to ensure that only Hindus are employed in Hindu temples and the law is not violated. And all those half-educated secular quote-unquote intellectuals can take a hike. This is a temple and a temple by definition is religious and your secular logic can be kept in a place where sun doesn't shine. Look, the bottom line is quite simple. We need to ask very, very difficult questions to TTD and Andhra government because Tirumala belongs to each and every devotee. And it is our collective responsibility to, to make sure that its sanctity is well preserved. Just because I was asking difficult questions to TTD in quite an assertive tone does not mean that I'm disrespectful towards TTD. I grew up as a kid, like any other Telugu kid especially, in front of Venkateswara and Tirumala is like like our extended home for every Telugu speaking family. So it is quite obvious and natural of the agony that we have when we hear such kind of sacrilege acts in Tirumala. Having said that, the day-to-day -day operations and the logistics the TTD offers to all the devotees who visit Tirumala is absolutely commendable. Especially and unfortunately if someone is so poor, they can visit Tirumala on free bus, have free darshan, stay in free cottage, have free meals and get back to their place downhill in a free bus. Everything is is offered free in Tirumala and great job being done by TTD on daily basis. Absolutely no doubts. But TTD should become more transparent, more accountable and more responsible in maintaining the sanctity of Tirumala and our Govinda. Let me conclude this video with something that most of us don't know about Tirumala. When you hear the word Prasadam from Tirupati, naturally Laddu comes to our mind, right? But Laddu was introduced like some last 400-500 years. Before that, since thousands of years, right from the time when Sri Venkateswara manifested himself on Tirumala, there is one prasad that is always offered even till today and it is the most important prasad of all. Even though you have diamond studded golden vessels filled with sweet rice and all kinds of sweet dishes which are offered as prasad to Govinda on daily basis, this one prasad stands above rest everything. And here is how the legend goes. Back in the times when Venkateswara Swami manifested himself in Tirumala, there was a potter by the name Kuruvarati Nambi. He was an ardent devotee of Govinda, but unfortunately very poor, and he just used to make pots for his living. And all he could afford is curd rice in an earthen pot. So he used to make pots for his living, and whatever that he could earn from that pots, he could make a humble offering of curd rice in the same earthen pot to Govinda. During the same time, there was a king called Tondaman Chakravarti, and he used to offer all kinds of sweet dishes and gold and vessels. And the legend says that Sri Venkateswara Swami always preferred to have the curd rice in this earthen pot first and the remaining all the prasadas coming in golden vessels later. And this is the tradition right from those times even today 
and forever that the first prasadam offered to Govinda in Tirupati is a humble curd rice in an earthen pot. Tirupati Sri Venkateswara Swami is very very connected to the grassroot level of every Telugu speaking person in both Andhra and Telangana. People here observe strict vegetarian diet on Saturdays and worship Sri Venkateswara Swami. He's not a god, he's a part of the family for every Telugu speaking family. And of course, by extension, anyone and everyone who worships Sri Venkateswara Swami or Balaji. So that's about it. Here are the questions that each and every Hindu must at least be aware of and then demand answers from TTD and Andhra government. Dharmo Rakshati Rakshitaha, that means if you protect dharma, dharma will protect you, is from Mahabharat and this is only half of the full sentence. The full sentence goes like this. Dharme naivahata anti dharmo rakshati rakshitaha, which means dharma destroys the one who tries to destroy dharma and dharma protects the one who tries to protect dharma. This is the essence of Mahabharata. If you don't question, then you have no right to complain. It is as simple as that. Mukhinga Telugualak Nenchabdaan Kuntan Dendente, he laddu apavitra maina tarvata, chala mandi, pra చిత్తంగా విష్ణు సహస్రనామం చదువుదాం అంటున్నారు మంచిదే ఒక్కసారి కాదు రెండు సార్లు చదవండి మొదటిసారి ఇప్పుడు లడ్డు అపవిత్రమైనందుకు రెండవసారి భవిష్యత్తులో మళ్ళీ ఇంకెప్పుడైనా అపవిత్రమైనందుకు ఇలా జరిగిన ప్రతిసారి విష్ణు సహస్రనామం చదువుకుంటూ కూర్చుందాం కురుక్షేత్రంలో పుట్టిన ఈ విష్ణు సహస్రనామం కంటే ముందు అదే కురుక్షేత్రంలో భగవద్గీత కూడా పుట్టింది విష్ణు సహస్రనామం భక్తిని నేర్పిస్తే భగవద్గీత బాధ్యతను నేర్పిస్తుంది అరే హిందువుగా జరిగినటువంటి ఈ అత్యంత అపవిత్ర అసహ్యకరమైనటువంటి కార్యాన్ని తిరిగి కనీసం ప్రశ్న కూడా ఒక ప్రశ్నించలేకపోతే దేవుడు ముందు దీపం పెట్టడం అనేది భక్తి ఆ దీపం ఆరకుండా చూసుకోవడం అనేది బాధ్యత భక్తి ఒక్కటే సరిపోదు బాధ్యత కూడా ఉండాలి ప్రాయశ్చిత్తంగా విష్ణు సహస్రనామం జపించడం ఒక్కటే సరిపోదు ఎదురు తిరిగి ప్రశ్నించడం కూడా నేర్చుకోవాలి ఈ వీడియో నా తరపు నుంచి ప్రాయశ్చిత్తం ప్రశ్నించడం ద్వారా మీ తరపు నుంచి ఏం చేస్తారనేది మీ విజ్ఞతకు వదిలేస్తుంది ఎక్స్క్యూజ్ మీ ఫర్ ఆల్ ద నాన్ తెలుగు స్పీకింగ్ ఆడియన్స్ ఐ వాస్ జస్ట్ సేయింగ్ దాట్ వీ నీడ్ టు స్టాండ్ అప్ అండ్ క్వశ్చన్ వెన్ ఎవర్ దెర్ ఇస్ సచ్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ సాక్రలెజ్ డన్ టు తిరుమల శ్రీ వెంకటేశ్వర స్వామి ఇట్ ఆల్వేస్ థ్యాంక్స్ ఫర్ వాచింగ్